Living in the Past is a Turtle Mysteries of Azeroth and Everlook Broadcasting Production. This is Living in the Past, your Everlook Broadcasting Company weekly show about all things Turtle Mysteries of Azeroth. Today is Friday, December 29th, 2023, and I'm Dan, your host for the next hour. Welcome everyone, it's the final episode of the year. I'm doing things a little differently today because of that. Um, I'm going to be a little more, I'm going to say off the cuff. Um, Normally, I... Like, write a script for about half the show. Um, for more for more long-form or important topics, I will do bullet points. But for today, I, I've pre-written or scripted out almost none of the show. It's going to be almost all off the cuff. I have my bullet points and the things I want to talk about today. But overall, it's going to be a little less formatted and a little more I'm speaking directly to you on on a consistent basis so I don't know if that's something to look forward to or or something that you're like well we want something a little more polished and produced but either way we're gonna go with it and we're gonna have some fun with it today also for tonight's music I'm specifically gonna reference songs that I have already played Um, These are kind of my favorite picks from 2023 for Living in the Past from episodes we've done previously this year. So if you're listening to this live, you're going to get a lovely taste of some wonderful music that we played in previous episodes. If you're on the YouTube version of this episode, uh, you're going to be... I'm sorry. First off, I'm sorry. Uh, You're going to be missing out a little bit. But I will at least say the songs, as I usually do, uh, that are going to be played before each break. So you're going to know what you're missing out on. That sounds really bad. That sounds horrible. Yeah, you get to know what you're not going to get to experience today. Congratulations. Um, but how, how it's going to work is I'm going to be picking some of my favorite songs that I played on previous episodes of Living in the Past, and we're going to have those as our music breaks. There's going to be six songs in total. And I, I've tried to stick more to uh, um, game or like gaming adjacent music. Um, so we're not going to have any uh, any like Flogging Molly from la- from the other week or something. Not last week, but the week before. Um it's going to be all at least somewhat oriented towards uh, video gaming of some kind. Uh, the first break is going to be more a little louder, a little more energetic, and the second break is going to be a bit more. Um, I, I would almost say uh, not not quieter, but um, more 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 nuanced. We'll say. Now then, topics for today. What we're going to be talking about. Um, opening here, I just have some cleanup I want to do. Um, first off, apologies for no show last week. Um, as I had been saying in the run up to last week, no show. I'm going to take a week off. Uh, hopefully you all got through your holiday break without me. Uh, I certainly enjoyed taking a little bit of time off less than I had hoped for though. I only got about a day and a half off, but, um, hopefully you all enjoyed the holiday break, if you did indeed take one. Um, We are going to be talking about some new Turtle server news, uh, specifically highlighted from Vrograg's broadcast from a couple days ago. Um, And I I do give immense credit to him for for covering it. Um, And then we're going to be talking about a little of the background on the new raid that, that we're starting to get little tidbits on and what we might be able to expect. Uh, we're going to talk about some lore in both. Well, I don't think, no, we're not going to be talking about lore in the second segment. The second segment is going to be all about goal setting and phase planning and then respecting other people's goals. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, that kind of New Year's resolution style stuff in the second break. And then our final break, um, just some follow ups from previous things I've talked about. 
Um, I, I do want to touch again on Season of Discovery um, and, and my thoughts on it. Now that I've spent a month actually trying it out, really giving it the time of day, respecting it, and, and what I what I felt about it. Um, also, uh, other Vanilla Initiative uh, points I want to bring up, and my own personal issues. <laughs> I... I keep trying to level hardcore characters, and the fact of the matter is, is that I'm not good at not taking risks. Um, I, I like to redline my characters. I like to push things as hard as I can, so uh, unfortunately, there have been a few failures, and I want to highlight, uh, or rather, lowlight some of what, I, what I've what i been up to with that. But that's, that's what we can expect for the show today. Um, opening up here... What what are your what are your goals you're setting for 2024? Obviously, we're going to be talking about the concept of goal setting and resolutions in the second segment, but priming your thought processes here, what goals do you have? What 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 exactly do you think you need to set uh either character or overall on your on your account? <laughs> you get another alt level jesus what what is it that you want to set as your mar- your mile markers for for 2024 start think start thinking about that we're not going to talk about it just yet like i said that's going to be in the second segment here but i want your brain in that mode i want you to be thinking about that so make sure you start start processing that um i know for myself for myself I want to get a shaman leveled up at this point. Um, sh- I-, I have a love hate relationship with shaman. I I-, I don't like the amount of buttons <laughs> that they have that they can hit. Um, even even on my priest, I was starting to get a little overloaded with the different heal spells that they had available. Uh, before I realized that okay, I'm using two of these buttons, and then I'm using. I'm using decursive, so okay, happy days. But the, the I, I easily hit button overload, but I do want to try to get a shaman leveled. Um, I, I also want to find a totem manager that actually functions with PFUI, and unfortunately, I've struggled with that a good bit. I really, I, I can't really find a a a totem manager that that works well with PFUI. So. The struggle continues, but um, we'll we'll see about that. If you do, if you do know my characters on uh, on Turtle here, feel free to hit me up with what uh, you might think would work best for a for a totem manager. I certainly don't mind recommendations. Um, I'm on my warrior mo- most often still, so feel free to let me know what you think. If you want to just DM me, I, I certainly don't mind. Um, next here. Next, that's kind of where my goals are. I want to get that shaman level. I want to have that third, that third sixty available. I also do want to, I want to get the warrior into Nax here at some point in the next six months. I, I would really like to push him up to that point. He's able to walk into BWL at this point without a problem, but certainly not ready for AQ forty. I don't have. My cold rage daggers yet. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I don't have the nature resist. So I, a couple of things I really need to work on before I can see AQ forty. And then of course, um, Nax, you have to be ready to hit at your your best. Uh, and, and up now coming up here, <laughs> leaning into our our upcoming topic, um, you're gonna need to have that Nax gear for what comes after. So let let's talk let's talk about what uh, what comes after Nax. Thanks to Vrograg's stellar reporting, and please subscribe to him over on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Vrograg Fish Slayer. You all, I, I assume you all, if you're listening to me, you probably listen to him already. But in case you don't, stellar guy. Amazing reporting on this from his most recent video. Um, there has been a discovery of what possibly could be the newest raid. 
And that that is Grim Batal. Uh, some intrepid explorers ventured in past all of the excessively powerful elites in there and discovered a raid portal. And who boy is that that trash alone outside the door powerful. So for big thing to keep in mind, the trash outside the door is the strongest we've ever seen in just regular outdoor trash ever. Uh, I believe the comparison he used was Anixia's guards. So we normally don't see that just wandering out in the world. That that that's a big indicator for what we might see in in this raid. Grimbatol. Grimbatol has a sordid history in the World of Warcraft universe. Let's start dialing the clock back here. We didn't see Grimbatol become an active area in any way until Cataclysm. Obviously, in Vanilla, there were Dragonkin outside of it, and in particular, the Horde Anixia attunement quest took you outside Grimbatol to kill a red dragon. That much is true, but we really didn't see inside Grimbatol until Cataclysm. At that point, it became an instance. It's a standard five-man instance run. A lot of Twilight, a lot of Elementals. You see a lot of Old God Corruption going on in there. And it's it's interesting, um, and you get, do get this fun flying segment, but we really we didn't get to dive into into Grimbatol with that it was more like a tour to be honest um I wasn't a huge a huge fan of it but it it did well enough to show us a glimpse of you know what what Grimbatol was before it was ruined and when I say before it was ruined um I'm not saying like Blizzard ruined it in any way they did a fine job with Grimbatol I just didn't love the instance um why Grimbatol is the way it is, is because during the War of the Three Hammers, and we're dialing the clock back now much, much further. This is pre-Vanilla, this is pre-Warcraft 1. We are going into War of the Three Hammers. Before, before Black Rock Mountain was even formed, we had the War of the Three Hammers, which was essentially a Dwarven Civil War. The Dark Irons were just unleashing on on all of Dwarfdom and all of Cosmodan. Grimbatol, in particular, was a very contentious battleground. It stood between Airy Peak and Ironforge, and was a very solid holdout point for the Dark Irons. The, the other dwarves all knew this, and they really tried to converge and take it from, from the Dark Irons. And for the most part, they were slowly turning the tide. The, uh, the, the Iron Forge Dwarves and the Airy Peak Dwarves were both combining forces to actually eject the Dark Irons from this location. Um, and, and the Queen of the Dark Irons said, I I hate this. <laughs> I don't like this. Um, I'm going to do something about it. Now, the Queen of the Dark Irons was part of the Dark Iron army that was held up holding Grim Batol for for the Dark Iron Dwarves. She summoned these evil, vile earth spirits, these spirits from the earth, and tried to use them as a weapon against... The Iron Forge and Airy Peak Dwarves. Unfortunately, the spell was a little too potent and a little too much. And instead of just using these evil spirits as a weapon, ended up polluting the entire area, the entire fortress with this evil presence. And I, I believe most of the Dark Irons there died. Including the Dark Iron Queen. Unfortunately, I don't remember her name off the top of my head. Um, I wish I did. I don't know this lore as well as most lore, to be honest. But, 
that's why suddenly you don't see any dwarves there. It's it's all evil. It's all evil. So the gate there is open now. And we are going to get to see what actually is inside Grimbatol. And this, this kind of brings up the big question in my mind. What do we see in there? Obviously, there are some beefy guards sitting outside. A lot of dragonkin, a lot of other things. What's actually inside? Because you can easily ask the question, are the dragons out there guarding people from getting inside or guarding what's inside from getting out? And I think that I think that's a really important question. Is there any of that just evil sitting in there still? Because certainly in the Cataclysm interpretation of Grimbatol, that that evil presence turned out to be old god energy. And they, they did a good job of interpreting that and showing that Twilight's Hammer moved in and they're here to stay. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So the... The big question in my mind is, what kind of bosses are we going to see? Is it going to be elemental-based? Is it going to be old god-based? Is it going to be a new kind of threat? Is it going to be Dark Iron at some point? Are the Dark Irons going to be uh, trying to take it back? And, and they send a force in. This, this is This is fun speculation. For me, because I don't actually know. Uh, despite the fact that I'm on staff with Turtle, I don't go looking into this stuff ahead of time because it, it'd be so easy for me to accidentally let something slip. So I just don't look. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm really excited. I'm so excited to see how Turtle interprets what... Grimbatol is supposed to be. Um, whether that's okay, the the red dragonflight is trying to do something here, or other things are happening. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun to see this new challenge, and then it's also going to be fun to see, you know, a a completely new higher raid tier be interpreted as well by the turtle team. How do you make a new tier for it? How do you make a whole new set of gear for a 40 man? Because we've seen we've seen them do something like Emerald Sanctum, where, okay, it's a 40 man, but it's more like an Anixia style encounter where it's not it's not like a huge loot table. It's two bosses worth of loot tables. This is a full like, okay, they're doing a whole raid here. How do you interpret? constructing those loot tables how do you balance them how do you make sure it fits with the concept of vanilla and i i think that's that's going to be the most fun to see them interpret for me that that's that's what i'm excited for with that being said though we need to come up to our first break of the day and like i said this one is going to be a little more of that high energy that uh that I want to make sure we're kind of starting the show off with, or starting to show off with. We're ha we're a third of the way through, um, so we're going to start off with Orchid Arms by Thoriana Jambo Jin, which uh, I when I first played it, actually had a lot of people asking like, "Wait, what is the song? What is the song?" Um, it, it's one of my favorite. Like Orchid Arms, and later on in the show, White Bresby Buff are. The, the my favorite songs that Thoriana and Jambo Jin did. After that, Power of the Horde by Level Ten Elite Torn Chieftain. Because I I heard you you Hordies like some metal. Don't worry, we're not we're not done with it yet. And then finally, Reply Code Alpha. That wonderful remix for Mister Voltron. 
of Algalon the Observer. It's got a great beat. It's great mix. you love to see it. Coming up after the break here in Living in the Past, we're going to talk about goal setting, we're going to talk about planning, and we're going to talk about respecting other people's goals. So don't go anywhere. Enjoy the music. We'll be back right after this. The musical tracks for this episode have been removed due to YouTube copyright. To listen to the full episodes with music, tune in to Everlook Broadcasting every Friday with the in-game radio widget. Welcome back to Living in the Past. I'm Dan. It's good to have you back. Reply Code Alpha by Mr. Voltron is my my favorite track from him. There, there's a reason I've played it twice now uh, on this show. Uh, but if if you like that style, if you like that style of music that he does, I would strongly recommend you Google Mr. Voltron. His channel's not up anymore, but people have reposted a lot of his music uh, uh, since then. Uh, look it up, find it, appreciate it. He did some really stellar work. So do do yourself a favor and make sure you do that. Now, second segment of the show. We are in it. And we're going to be talking about resolutions and goals. I had you starting to think about this earlier. Where I just wanted you in the mindset of, okay, what am I planning for three months into 2024? Six months. The full year. And I want to try and keep things focused specifically on wow goals for yourself. Obviously, I don't. I don't want to know about your, your your personal goals. That's not that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about wow goals, and how to set those goals, and how to plan them out, and then how to respect others' goals at the same time. Because obviously, we do not exist in a vacuum. I've talked about the need for cooperation and respect for others before, and I will I will echo myself once again on that. We do not exist in a vacuum. We are not solo here. When you're going into BWL or AQ40, you're most likely going in with 39 other people. So be respectful of others. Stay focused. But also give people the breathing room that you ask back from them. That's 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 pretty important. So goals and actually focusing on what your goals are as a as a player. Um, a lot of this is going to be more of that rating and higher tier kind of kind of thought processes because again, it's important to consider the stuff when you're working on a weekly timetable, you have to get gear over the course of three to six months. If, if you're solo though, if you're just leveling your first character, some of this is going to be relevant. Um, obviously, you want to know what you need to to gun for ahead of time. Thinking to yourself, okay, I'm coming up on level 49, 50. Uh, I need to make sure I do my Mara runs. I need to make sure I get my princess runs done. I need, I need my ring off princess, that kind of thing. That stuff does help. But a majority of this is really going to be focused on rating and planning. So... When, when you're looking at actually planning out what you need to do for your character, you must understand your needs. And we kind of talked about this a couple weeks ago. Understanding your needs and how to make sure in, in this new world of Turtle Wow, we understand how to identify those needs. So, again, using Fury Warrior as an example, let's say you're short on two hit. You're short on what you want for your crit to be. And you know you need more AP. AP obviously being how melee pumps their pumps their DPS up consistently. So basic ideas to kind of start with. You've identified your goals. You've identified what you need to do to take that next step up. The next thing you have to do is start identifying the pieces that you need. So... Um, let's say you're going into into BWL for that. You know the helmet off of Veil is solid for you. You want that. You know you want a DFT at some point. Every, <laughs> to be fair though, and this kind of brings in the later point, 
every melee on the planet wants a DFT. Everyone. <laughs> I I have no illusions that I'm ever going to see it. Of course, I I had a, I had no illusions. I was never going to see a fell striker on my goblin and then the other week I get a fell striker. So maybe I'm wrong here. Also, fell striker on a goblin is unreasonable. It is actually unreasonable. My uptime on flurry is excessive. <laughs> And then, of course, so fun fact, by the way, my roommate's a rogue. She hears that I got a fell striker and she's angry with me. <laughs> she is she is upset. And you know what? That's OK. And you, ba- back to the point. So you start identifying the pieces that you need to accomplish those goals. Um, what I like to do is once I know the pieces I need to take that next step up, so to speak, that I'm going to jump from one raid tier to the next, I actually make a Google spreadsheet (laughs) of all these pieces. And then I color code them as to how high in priority they are for me. So green is, eh, it'd be nice. Yellow is, okay, yes, this this is pretty important. And red is, I need this. That is not a want, that's a need. And then separately, I also make a list of non-raid drops that I need to get. So five, ten man, and then solo gear I can get. Stuff like Cold Rage Dagger again, for example. Uh, As a melee, if you're going into AQ-40, you need to have double Cold Rage Dagger. You need it. So I try to have these two lists going of things I can kind of farm on my own whenever or with, with small groups. And then stuff I need to identify for raid planning. Um, at that point, I, I take a look at the actual loot systems that I, I'm functioning in. So assume 2SR MS off spec. MS off spec? Why did I say off spec? OS. MSOS. Anywho, I talk weird. Um, I identify then how I use that system to accomplish these goals. And again, you don't you don't go full bore with that kind of thing either. A lot of people say, okay, how can I get the most out of my raid time as fast as possible? And this kind of leans into that that big part of working with others. If everyone says that, that's where a lot of that clashing and butting heads and that scrambling for for gear comes into play it creates tension it creates anxiety it 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 isn't it isn't a good vibe for for a raid by any stretch of the imagination plan things out over a three-month time span say okay i'm going to be writing bwl every week or at least three to four times a month through the next three months I need to have these pieces of gear collected by the end of that three-month time span. So again, let's say you want to make sure you have the helm off of off of um, Veil vale in at least one of those months. You want you want to have uh, the boots off of Chromag as well at some point in time in those months. Set that as your goal. Don't set your goal of hey, I want to get as much gear as I physically can as fast as possible. Set your reasonable goal of, okay, if I'm going to be raiding regularly with this, I'm setting that goal of I need these two pieces within that time frame. Two pieces of loot in a three-month time span is not unreasonable. And I think keeping your expectations reasonable with your goals and making sure you're accomplishing those goals while keeping your expectations at a reasonable level is how you raid sustainably in the long term. Again, you're working with 39 other people, most likely, probably, certainly, to get this stuff done. You have to respect those boundaries. And if if you're the kind of person who is just going to 
try to get as much loot as possible as fast as possible, people are going to identify that as a problem. People are going to see that and assume either you're going to cut and run or you're going to you're going to always be that level of greedy. It's so much better if you set your goals, focus on those items you need within that time frame, and then allow others that breathing room to say, okay, other people want to get DFT. Other people want to get a an Ashkandi. Other people are going for these other items. I'm going to respect that. Let's say you're an orc. You want, obviously, both axes. But saying, okay, I want the helm off veil. Vale. I want both of the axe drops. I want the boots off of Chromag. Saying you want all of that stuff and you want it now, that that may work out well for you in the short term. But in the long term, making other people feel like they have to cater to you to give you loot to make you feel good is not a good strategy. That that ostracizes people. So instead, plan a couple pieces. And then slowly as other people are also gathering loot, include other goals, other objectives. Obviously, an orc in particular really wants both those axes out of BWL. Those are still the gorgeous axes too. They don't drop off and specifically the um the one off of Neff. Now I say that I've seen I think I've seen four drops since last year. So all oh, since the uh February of last year I should say. Of this year? It's 2023 still. It is 2023 still. My point is though, the more you set your goals, respect other people's boundaries, and allow them to also accomplish their goals. That's that spirit of communal productivity. That's that spirit of efficiency that is going to propel a raid group forward. If you cooperate with the people around you and work with them, that's always going to get you further ahead. That's always going to move the group forward much faster. Don't try to go for everything all at once. That's never going to work out. It's just it's just not. Instead, consider what other people are also gunning for. Consider everyone's needs and make sure your needs fit in with everyone else's. That's the best way a raid group can be productive. With that, be- with that being said, though, that's that's I won't say that's my rant on goal setting and respecting others, but it certainly isn't just a discussion topic. And I hope I hope people consider what I've had to say here. Cooperation is so important. Let's go and get to the next break, though. How about that? How about that? One more break here before we get into our final segment of 2023. Our final segment of 2023 coming up here. And for this, we're getting a little more subtle, a little more, a little more into those, those radio vibes. So what we're going to have here is Ain't That a Kick in the Head by Dean Martin. I played it before, and and certainly to celebrate the origin of Everlook Broadcasting Company uh, in, in the Fallout Radio universe, it is a banger. And then after that, a personal favorite of mine in Captain Placeholder, the original, the original track. I believe I played this on my first episode of Living in the Past. And then finally... It wouldn't be a best of 2023 if I didn't get a little bit of Old Gods of Asgard in. So we're going to play The Poet and the Muse from the original Alan Wake, which is oddly enough available now on a an album done by Poets of the Fall as Old Gods of Asgard. They released an Old Gods of Asgard album, and it's really good. So please consider picking it up. When we come back, I'm going to be talking out, talking out, talking about trying out Season of Discovery, my own personal hardcore failures, and other upcoming projects that may be worth checking out. 
So stick with us here. More Living in the Past coming up right after this. The musical tracks for this episode have been removed due to YouTube copyright. To listen to the full episodes with music, tune in to Everlook Broadcasting every Friday with the in-game radio widget. Uh, welcome back to Living in the Past, everyone. I'm Dan. The final episode and the final segment of 2023 for the broadcast. Uh, and less time than I expected to have for it. About three and a half minutes. So we're going to rapid fire <laughs> through the different topics that I wanted to talk about really quick. First off, uh, I'll mention my hardcore failures. Um, I have tried to level a warrior, a warlock, a hunter... And uh, a druid, all hardcore and all absolute failures so far. Um, I can't, I can't grasp the concept of not doing content in a certain order, and sometimes that means doing really difficult stuff. <laughs> so. I, I tend to take far too many risks in my leveling process, and I just, I cannot, I cannot latch my brain onto how you actually need to level hardcore. Where it's very slow, it's very methodical, you're doing very easy content consistently. Or you're in a group, and you're staying safe in numbers. I'm not good at either one of those. Next, uh, I did uh, try out Season of Discovery, uh, and I have... I have more than a few thoughts. I'm probably going to do a longer form YouTube video on it on my personal channel. But for here and now, um, I did I did give it the good college try. I, I leveled both a shaman and a warrior on there. And I, I do appreciate that they're trying to bring in new me- thoughts and mechanics into a very strictly vanilla concept. I do feel like it is a... Bit of a retailification still. I believe my my initial thoughts were correct on that. Um, it's not for me. It's not for me. And that's okay. Um, it is giving life to a whole new, I want to say almost like generation of vanilla and classic players. So it's bringing, it's bringing more people into that, into that mindset, which I'm very grateful for. I think that's good. Um, it's definitely not a product for me though. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, I feel like some of my predictions were pretty accurate with, with it on that. Um, the the hardcore servers, I will say, are still doing very well. So um, I hope they continue to experiment. I hope they continue to iterate with Season of Discovery and other seasons to come. I hope the experimentation continues. Um, I just, I, I do, I would hope for a different direction, but that's that's a personal preference for me. Um but I did, like I said, I did want to make sure I give it the time of day and respect that that it deserves. Um, also, uh, a quick shout out because they just announced a beta test. Uh, Project Epoch is uh, doing a beta test coming up here uh, in quarter one of 2024. And then they're going to be looking to do a phased launch in quarter two of 2024. Um, they're more of a TBC Wrath hybrid server. They're not vanilla, so do keep that in mind. But if you're looking for more of that Wrath and TBC experimentation, might be a good idea to to see what they have to offer. And certainly, those of us here at Turtle, uh, you know, salute the efforts of Project Project Epoch and what they have going on. So, all the best of luck to them. Uh, we hope that they they do a stellar job with things. Uh, with that being said, though, I need to get out of here. We need we need to close up shop. So thank you for taking the time to join me today. Our nostalgia continues, even though this year's broadcasts are now at an end. And I hope you enjoyed the shows here so far, more in 2024. A huge thank you to the Turtle developers, moderators, staff, and volunteers. Without the entire team's hard work and dedication, we wouldn't have this station or server group. An additional thank you to the audio engineers and creators here for the use of their soundtracks they've created, which we use for segment transitions and intro audio. If you'd like to find out more about what I do, I invite you to check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at the Dan Nation and my series Ancient Lore, a recapture of the spirit of my original podcast, The Ancient of Lore. Until next year, uh, how about that? 
let's keep living in the past. And, and a quick note, we're going to play not just the small clip of Wipe Res Rebuff to close out here. We're going to play the whole song. So I'll see you all in 2024.